Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have four charges at the corners of a square, and we're trying to find the force on Q due to the presence of the other three charges. Notice that these have charge 2Q and this has charge 3Q. How do we do that? Well, again, the technique is always the same. We begin by drawing the vectors representing the forces on Q. Notice there's a force of repulsion between these two, so the force on Q due to this charge right here will be to the right. And, um, well, let's see, since we didn't number them, that causes a bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to number these. I'm going to call this Q1, I'm going to call this Q2, I'm going to call this one Q3, and I'm going to call this one Q4. Notice that labeling the charges does help when we start using, um, when we start drawing the forces and we want to use the, the correct notation on those forces. So this will be the force between 1 and 2. So we'll draw this as the force between 1 and 2, like this. Now we have a force of repulsion between these two. And so I can go ahead and, oh, no, that's not a very straight force, is it? Uh, let's try this again. All right, there we go. So this would be here the force between 1 and 3. So we'll write it like this. And then we have a force of repulsion between these two forces, between 1 and 4. Notice that this is a larger charge, so we expect a bigger force. However, it's a greater distance, which causes a smaller force. So probably it'll be a little bit smaller than the other two, like this. And so this would be the force between 1 and 4. There we go. And so it's always good to label to have the right notation to make it easy to see which force represents which situation. Now the next thing we want to do is find the magnitude of those forces. You can see due to symmetry that the force 1, 2 should be equal in magnitude to the force 1, 3. So we can say that force 1, 2 is equal to the force 1, 3, which is equal to K times the product of the two charges, so that would be times q and times 2q divided by the distance between them squared, that would be d squared, so this would be 2kq squared divided by d squared. Now what about the force between q1 and q4, f14? Well, it's a little different, so f14 is equal to uh, k times q times 3q divided by the distance squared. Now the distance of the diagonal would be the square root of 2 times d. So here that gives us the square root of 2 times d quantity squared. So this ends up being, let's see here, that would be 3 over 2 k q squared divided by d squared. Now what do we need to do in order to find the the force, the, the final force or the total force. Well, let's see here, when we add these two together plus this one, we end up with something that probably looks like this. So this will be the total force. And how do we find that? We find that by adding the vectors together. Now, F14 is pointing at an angle. And in order to add vectors together, we need to find the x and y component of that. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have f14 in the x direction, which is equal to f14 times, and then we have an angle here, let's call that theta, which is the same as the angle theta here, which obviously is 45 degrees. So this would be f14 times the cosine of 45 degrees in the x direction. And then to find the y component, f14 in the y direction, that will be equal to f14 times the sine of 45 degrees in the y direction. They're both positive. I'm going to put the unit vector symbols on there. So they're both positive because this one is pointing to the right, this is one's pointing up. So that this component right here, so this here would be f14 in the y direction. There we go. Okay, I think now we're ready to add them together. So, to find f total in the x direction, that is equal to, let's add all the x components together, so that would be 1, 4 in the x direction, plus f1, 2. 
So that would be the component of 1, 4 in the x direction plus the whole force F12. So in this case, that's going to be equal to F14 in the x direction. So that would be equal to 3 over 2, or better yet, let me write one more thing in there so you can see where that came from. So F14 in the x direction, that's this right here. Let's write that down. This would be F14 times the cosine of 45 degrees in the x direction plus F12, the magnitude F12 in the x direction. So that way you can see where the components came from. So now we can plug in what these are. So this is equal to F14, that would be 3 over 2 kq squared over d squared times the cosine of 45 degrees plus F12, and F12 is right here, that would be 2kq squared over d squared, and the whole thing in the x direction, like that. And of course, we can simplify that by factoring out a kq squared over d squared. Ah, we can do that. So this is equal to uh, 3 over 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus 2 multiplied times kq squared over d squared in the x direction. So simplify things a little bit more, and then of course you can rewrite that as a single number. How about in the y direction? f total in the y direction. Now notice the magnitude of the y component here is the same as the magnitude of the x component, and f13 is the same as f12, at least in, in magnitude. So therefore, we will get the exact same result in the y direction. It's pointing upward, so it's positive. So that will also be 3 over 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus 2 times k q squared over d squared in the positive y direction. And so those are the two components of the total force. And then, of course, if you want to write it together as a single quantity, you can do that as well. But at least it'll get you far enough here to know what to do from here. That's how it's done.